Hi everyone. It's been many days since I uploaded any long form video on the YouTube. But from now on, you can expect those videos on a frequent basis. And this video is about shock and the types of shock. Very commonly I've got that request that sir, we are not able to understand shock. Can you please simplify what are the types, what are what is stroke volume and all those things. And here it is. So let's get started. If I ask you, what is shock? The most common answer which I have got till date is shock is equal to hypotension, which is not. Actually, shock means hypoperfusion of the tissues, which lead to tissue hypoxia, ultimately leading to organ failure and later on as multi-organ failure. Yes, it is closely related, but actually it is the tissue hypoperfusion. This is how you need to define. And now, uh, there's a common scenario, right? You're working in the ward or, or maybe emergency or ICU and a crazy HOD comes in, right? Every other person who is working, maybe nursing staff, the doctor, the juniors or whosoever is, uh, is working in that particular area gets shocked. And hence, you can remember the types of shock with a mnemonic crazy HOD. With crazy or C, it is cardiogenic shock. H, hypervolemic shock. O, obstructive shock. And D stands for distributive shock, which is the most common type of shock, right? And distributive shock is an umbrella under which there are certain categories, right? Subcategories, which can have septic shock as the most common, again, under distributive. Second, can be neurogenic. Third, anaphylactic shock and fourth can be endocrine causes like Edisonian crisis or uh, mixed edema coma. So these are the broad categories of shock or the types of shock. Now let's understand their pathophysiology or what are the effects they cause. Before jumping into that, let's see right, there's a heart right. This heart is contracting and hence maintaining the output throughout right throughout the organs and throughout the body and maintaining the function of the vital organs. So one thing which is very important is the contractility of the heart. Second is the flow, the flow which is going out which is called as afterload. And then this blood again come back to the heart in the term of or it is called as preload. So these are the three things which is preload, contractility and afterload. And now we go into different type of shock, understanding what happens. First is cardiogenic, right? Remember crazy. So crazy is cardiogenic. With cardiogenic, obviously the name itself says pathology lies in the heart, which can be myocardial infarction, right? The tissue is not working, right? There, there is a death of the tissue. Now with that, which it, it impairs the contractility, heart is not able to contract which it should be, right, in a, in a normal conditions. Now, because of that decrease in the contractility or impairment of the contractility, what happens is the stroke volume, the amount of the blood which is ejected from the ventricles uh, um, in, in one beat decreases. So, stroke volume decreases. Now, if the stroke volume decreases, what happens is there is a compensatory mechanism and the heart rate goes up. Why? So as to maintain the cardiac output. But cardiac output or I can say cardiac index that decreases. Now there's a formula I'll just help you out. Cardiac output is equal to stroke volume into heart rate. So heart rate increases as a compensatory one so as to maintain but the stroke volume is so much reduced that ultimately cardiac output also falls. Right, or I can say cardiac index that to be to be very precise, right? It, it is much better to talk in terms of cardiac index I, ideally. Now, further, if I talk about the mean arterial pressure, the formula for mean arterial pressure is cardiac output into SVR. Now, what is this SVR? SVR is nothing, it is systemic vascular resistance, just an English term, right? So there's a resistance in the systemic part in uh, in the vascular compartment right so there is a resistance which is which reflects and which talks about the afterload actually 
so uh when your cardiac output goes low right it it goes it is dramatic and very significant decrease which also decreases the map right the mean arterial pressure and hence in compensation there is a slight increase in svr in a case of cardiogenic shock so now i think now you are able to get to know about the stroke volume then we talked about the heart rate we talked about cardiac output or cardiac index then we talked about your svr right and further is mean arterial pressure once the mean arterial pressure drops obviously that leads to tissue hypoperfusion ultimately tissue hypoxia so this is about cardiogenic shock now moving on to the next one is in cardiogenic there can be arrhythmias also right they can also lead to that they can be uh, aortic regurgitation severe aortic regurgitation or severe uh, mitral regurgitation that also can be a part of it but majority remember for cardiogenic it is the 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 myocardial infarction the acute myocardial infarction or maybe the heart failure right because there is a impairment or decrease of the contractility now coming on to the second one is hypovolemia the name itself says right the volume is less in the compartment the vascular compartment which can be let's say uh, any acute bleeding right acute gi bleeding patient presenting with varices and uh, they, they, there can be lower lower gi bleeding or let's say any trauma causing bleeding then can be uh, vomiting diarrhea burns any anastomatic leak so all these causes right all these causes comes under hypovolemic shock the volume is low hence the preload which i just mentioned right there is a contractility there is a preload which is coming to the heart that decreases once the preload decreases again the stroke volume because stroke volume is nothing it is the amount of blood which leaves or which is ejected from the ventricles right that also decreases because there is less of blood inside the heart so stroke volume decreases the decrease in the stroke volume heart rate tries to increase right tries to compensate so heart rate increases ultimately because the stroke volume is very significantly decreased cardiac output or cardiac index decreases now if cardiac output decreases svr increases just like it is just like what we just discussed in cardiogenic right so svr increases and ultimately what happens is the mean arterial pressure map decreases leading to tissue hypoperfusion again the same coming on to the third type which is obstructive shock as the name says this is a obstruction to the flow of the blood and more common example in this is pulmonary embolism so there is let's say dislodgement of the clot right from from the lower limb right there is a dvt in the lower limb and there is dislodgement and that comes as a embolus and gets obstructed in the pulmonary vessels hence the blood is not able to go out of the pulmonary vessel into the left atria then to the left ventricle and ultimately into the aorta and hence that causes decrease of stroke volume the decrease of stroke volume there is increase of heart rate right it tries to compensate just like the first two and further it causes decrease of cardiac output or cardiac index and in this scenario also the svr increases just to compensate but the decrease in cardiac output is so much that ultimately map decreases so this is about pulmonary embolism the other causes which can cause which 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 are a part of obstructive shock can be cardiac tamponade or tension pneumothorax so with cardiac tamponade what happens is there's a blood surrounding the heart right and then it is giving a tamponade effect it is compressing the heart from outside hence again the stroke volume decreases and all those are similar right the another one example is tension pneumothorax and that what happens is the abnormal air which is the air which is there in the pleural cavity right it just keep increasing and pushes the heart it just compresses the heart and the vessels which are draining right so preload also decreases hence again the similar so under obstructive what we have three causes one is pulmonary embolism second is cardiac tamponade third is tension pneumothorax now moving on to the very special one and the more common one and the most common one is distributive shock 
Now, distributive, I already mentioned, uh, under which we have the major reason as septic shock. The name itself says septic. Hence, the patient has sepsis or has a source of infection. It can be, let's say, patient having UTI or pneumonia or any other, any other infection, right? Now, with that, those those culprit bacteria, let's say, Pseudomonas, Asinobacter, Klebsiella, whatever the, the organism is, right? Maybe fungi. So, whatever the organism is, they cause release of inflammatory markers, right? And the cytokines. Now, further, which leads to vasodilation, intense vasodilation of the vessels, the systemic vessels. Hence, if the vessels get dilated, obviously the resistance which it was posing to the ejection of the blood from ventricle, it decreases. So, I'll just again try to simplify. The heart is pumping, right? And the blood is ejected from LV to aorta and from RV to pulmonary vessel, right? Now, if the vessel in which it has to go, it dilates. So, it doesn't give you a, give any kind of resistance. Hence, the SVR decreases. If SVR decreases, right? The other thing is, uh, the stroke volume because there is a vasodilatation, there is no resistance, hence much of blood goes into um, into the aorta. So stroke volume increases, heart rate also increases, leading to increase of cardiac output or cardiac index again, unlike the first three. So this is the differentiating one. So in septic shock or distributive shock over here, right, especially the septic shock, you have increase of cardiac output or cardiac index, right? There is the very drastic decrease or very significant decrease of SVR, ultimately leading to decrease of MAP, mean arterial pressure, right, and leading to tissue hyperperfusion. So this is about septic shock. If I come on to the next one, which is again neurogenic, it is a different one, uh, where the sympathetic supply is cut, right. And with sympathetic supply, obviously, they, they go with catecholamines and you have the natural ones as epinephrine or epinephrine, dopamine. So, these are the natural catecholamines, right? And they, uh, what they cause is, again, they cause is uh, vasoconstriction. So, that that is gone, right? And hence, so whenever there they, they has a spinal injury, very commonly, right? These are the patients who go into this state and there is a vasodilation. Similar picture, but the difference between the spinal, uh, the septic, and the spinal shock in septic, there is also microcirculatory leak, and with that, there is movement of the fluid or the blood outside the vessel. So, there's a vasodilation plus microcirculatory leaks in septic shock, whereas in neurogenic, nothing right. I mean, just the vasodilation. Why? Because of uh, absence of catecholamines. Then third or decrease of catecholamines, means they are not able to act actually, right? Then third is anaphylactic shock. And anaphylaxis, again, which you know, it's an allergic reaction. It can happen with many other, uh, let's say, uh, many, many drugs or any eating uh, uh, something which, is, which the patient is allergic to, right? So, so or, or maybe any kind of uh, tick bite or uh, bite from the scorpion or from the uh, bee, right? So, there are many, many causes of anaphylaxis. Now, leading to, which causes again the release of cytokines, ultimately causing vasodilatation. And fourth is your endocrine, mainly the Edisonian. In Edisonian, what happens is you have decrease of aldosterone. And again, ultimately what happens is patient goes into vasodilatation, right? And also there is, the, uh, when we talk about the Addisonian, there is hypotension or hypovolemia also. So in crux, I would just say, under distributive shock, remember only, only the septic shock, which is important for your exams and for your clinical practice also, right? Which is the most common one. And this is the whole table and uh, I, I got, again, I many requests simplifying it. So this is what I thought uh, to simplify, to explain and to create a video. And if you want a separate video on different type of shock with their management, kindly leave a comment below, right? Like let's say you want a video on septic shock 
द होल मैनेजमेंट हाउ टू गो हैड कल्चर्स एंड वट नॉट राइट जस्ट लीव अ कमेंट बिलो एंड आई एल बी देर विद इन नेक्स्ट वीडियो ओके बाय बाय टेक केयर